So I personally believe the art of cropping, well, it's one of the most underappreciated tools or, or techniques when it comes to the many things that we do to our photos during the editing process. And, and there are quite a few folks out there that believe a, I guess a true professional should never ever crop their photos and that the composition should always be something that's perfected in camera only and never after the fact through cropping. But for me, I'm, I'm in the, I guess the complete opposite camp on that thought track. I personally believe that cropping is one of the most powerful ways to improve one's photography. But much like all things, there are quite a few ways to, to maximize the power of this oh so important tool. And at the same time, quite a few ways to, to really mess it all up as well. And that's the topic of this week's video is to discuss the cropping mistake that I see most beginners make, including myself. So during my first few years of photography, the most common reasons that I used to crop my photos were one, and this is probably the most, um, I guess the most obvious reason that most people start cropping their photographs, and it's to remove edge distractions that are diverting the viewer's attention from the center of the photograph and drawing their eye out toward the edges of the scene, much like this scenario right here. This is my very first trip to the Golden Gate Bridge, but I missed these kind of areas right through here where I was cutting off these plants right through here kind of left this little residual area right through here. These are just things that I missed with my, within my composition when I was on location. So just coming up here to the crop tool and just kind of bringing in the, the right side here to eliminate that area. We'll bring the left side in to eliminate that area and just something right there. So the edges right here now look much, much cleaner. This side looks much cleaner than it did before. And I think that's probably the, the most obvious use case and the most common use case for cropping. But you know, as you go throughout your photographic journey, you start to identify other common ways or other, I should say, very helpful ways to, uh, or, or beneficial ways to use the crop tool. And another one is to actually zoom in and kind of tighten up your composition on your main subject. So for this scene, I think this is a great example of this uh, classic shot through the, the trees to Yosemite Falls. But this area right through here, it's really not adding anything to the overall composition. I kind of feel like this area up through here is just not interesting enough to, to warrant that much space in the overall photograph. So I just want to kind of tighten things up just a little bit. So I'm just going to come up here to the top, kind of bring this down to maybe about right there. Move it, shift it over. I want to keep a little bit of space on the left side of this tree and on the right side of this tree. And I think something like that looks good. So that right there looks like a much more focused composition, a much tighter composition. The eye doesn't kind of wander all over the place. Now, another very common way to, uh, to use the crop tool is just to change your overall aspect ratio or just change the overall, I guess, perspective of the photograph. And I think this is a good example right through here of a, of a tunnel view in Yosemite. And maybe I just want to flip this into a portrait orientation. So I'm going to change the aspect ratio from original. Let's drop it down to four by five hit the shortcut key X to flip it in a vertical orientation. And then we can just slide it over here to the right. Maybe I want to reduce the amount of negative space up here a little bit to something like that. Shift it over all the way in the corner and hit close. And now the image is in a vertical or a portrait orientation. And then the fourth most more, I shouldn't, I don't want to say most common, but one of the most common ways that I started to use the, uh, the crop tool was really just to refine or tighten up a composition. And it's one of the biggest benefits of using the crop tool is just to make those kind of refinements after the fact. And this particular scene, you know, there is a little bit of texture in the sky right through here, but that texture really kind of stops right through here and everything above it is just that kind of like flat, flashed, flat kind of washed out gray. So I want to kind of just reduce that area a little bit. Come up here to the crop tool once again, Maybe just bring down that top area to about maybe right there. There's some area right through here in the bottom where it's not super interesting. So I'm going to kind of bring that up a little bit as well and close that down. And, and that right there looks to be a, actually, I want to shift it over a little bit as well to maybe about there just to kind of put the tree trunk a little bit off center and then close that down. And I think that that right there is a little bit more interesting than the way I had it originally. Now, those are really the, the four main reasons I think that most people start cropping their photographs to remove edge distractions, zoom in on the subject, change perspective or, or the orientation and the aspect ratio of the overall photograph, and then to just tighten up the composition itself. Now, as far as the big mistake is concerned, this mistake is not something that, that people do or that I did. 
it's really something that you don't do. It's something that you might not think about. I know I never really thought about it until I started to kind of look at the, or I should say pay more attention to the orientation of the photograph. When I, when I say orientation, I mean a, a landscape or a horizontal orientation versus a portrait or a vertical orientation. And I got a good example right here. So when you look at a photograph that is in a portrait orientation such as this or a vertical orientation, the dominant sides or the, the long edges of this photograph are on the left and the right. So the longest side on this photograph is on the left side and on the right side. And the eye naturally wants to follow that dominant side. So it's basically for this particular orientation, the eye is going to want to either scan this image from the bottom to the top or from the top to the bottom. It's one of the reasons I put this in a, uh, a vertical orientation. It originally, originally was in a horizontal orientation. So for this particular scene, I don't know about you, but my eye really starts about up here and just kind of follows the waterfall all the way down to the bottom where the bottom pool is. So a vertical orientation is absolutely perfect for this particular image. Now a horizontal orientation, if you look for the dominant edge in this particular situation, the dominant edge is going to be on the bottom and on the top. So the longest sides of this photograph are along the top and the bottom. So the eye is naturally going to want to follow those sides or those, uh, those dominant edges. So more than likely, the visual path that your eye is going to follow is going to be from the left to the right or from the right to the left. And I think that this is a great example right through here. My eye naturally wants to follow this coastline from the left side all the way to the right and then from the right all the way over to the left. And what's interesting about this whole visual path, I never really thought about it. I mean, I, I thought about the visual path, but I didn't really think about it in relation to the dominant edge of a scene or whichever side has the longest. So whenever you're shooting in a vertical orientation, the eye's going to want to scan it from the top to the bottom or the bottom to the top. If it's in a horizontal or a landscape orientation, the eye is going to want to scan it from the left to the right or the right to the left. But what if you're using a square crop where all sides are equal in a square? What does the eye do in that scenario? And this is where I think it gets really, really interesting. So for this particular scene right through here, this is an image that I, I captured quite a few years ago. And I really did like it. Just a real quick shot out of the hotel, uh, out of a balcony of my hotel I was staying in, in California. And I, and I left it in this orientation for years. And as I was preparing for this video, I started to realize that I don't think that this is the best crop or the best orientation for this particular photograph. And I started to experiment a little bit using this kind of visual path or this, uh, this optical journey as, I guess I should say, taking into account for the way that the human eye will naturally scan this image, which since it's in a horizontal orientation, the dominant side is on the bottom and on the top, the eye's probably going to want to follow from the left to the right or the right to the left. Let's say we flip it into a portrait orientation. I'm going to come down to four by five and hit uh, X to put it in a portrait orientation and maybe we'll line it up. Let's just leave it right there and hit enter. Now in this particular situation, since it's in a vertical orientation, the, the eye is going to want to scan this from the bottom of the scene all the way to the top of the scene or the top to the bottom. But I personally don't think that that works in this scenario because there's just not enough interesting area right up through here. It's all just right through here. Sure, I mean, there's some kind of, I guess, some interesting negative space, but the, the portrait orientation just doesn't look good enough for me to kind of hold this composition together. So I wanted to try a square orientation. So I'm going to come back up here. Let's just hit reset. I'm going to come up here to the aspect ratio and drop it down to one to one. And let's kind of, maybe let's slide it over here, try and get it in between a break of these trees, just to try and get a little bit more creative here. So something right here. Now, what is so interesting about a square orientation is that since there are no dominant sides, all sides of the square are equal. The eye doesn't really move from the left or to the right or the top to the bottom. The eye actually circles the overall scene. And I think that this really works well because I, for me personally, my eye kind of starts right through here, travels along through here, up around this, this dark area and around. And you actually see the layers in the scene a little bit better now because it's more focused of a composition. Whereas the, the horizontal composition, you really lost the layers behind the scene. But I think the square orientation really does this particular scene quite a bit of justice. Here's another example right here where just some, some, uh, some icebergs in Iceland where I think a square orientation or square crop works really, really well. Where when I, when I captured this photograph, it was in a horizontal orientation and I felt that since the scene, all the visual interest was really right through here, 
that putting it in that perspective would have that kind of visual flow where the eye, where the viewer's eye would scan the scene from left to right and right to left. But when putting it in a square orientation, now I feel like the viewer's eye kind of starts right through here and kind of scoops up a little bit along the cloud deck and around and the eye kind of just wanders this kind of circular rotation right through here. And I think that is really, really key. And I think that, and I got another cool example right through here, but I think that's really what the big mistake is, is, is not paying attention to that visual flow, not paying attention to the pathway that you feel like the viewer's eye is gonna travel in a particular scene. So this right here is a, uh, a classic image from, uh, from Acadia National Park in a horizontal orientation, which I think works really well because the viewer's eye is gonna start right here where the sun is, where the big splashes, the rocks, and this kind of moved over to the right or moved from the right to the left. But if we wanna flip this into a vertical orientation, let's try that. Come up here to the crop tool, drop it down to four by five. We'll hit the shortcut key X to flip it. And let's just leave it somewhere about right here. So now when you look at it like this, the visual, the, the visual flow isn't so much from left to right or right to left. Now it's really from bottom to top or top to bottom because that's where the dominant sides are. The longest edges of this composition are now on the left and the right. So the eye wants to scan up here to the bottom or more than likely from the bottom where all the action is to the top. Personally, I don't think that that orientation works very well in this scenario. Let's reset it and let's try a square crop. So one to one and maybe put it somewhere like this, I think looks a little bit better. We wanna make sure we kind of get the, the main areas of interest, which of course are the lighthouse, the setting sun, the splash and splash and the rocks right through here. And I think that this looks better than a vertical orientation, but what is so cool about this square crop is that the eye actually follows that kind of circular visual flow. So for me, my eye starts right around here and kind of swoops down across the splashing, the splash on the rocks, up and around to the lighthouse and back around to the brightest part of the scene again. And my eye kind of just circles the entire scene like that. And that kind of circular visual path I think is really, really cool. So that's kind of what I thought was kind of a, an, a real aha moment for me. You know, in a lot of the, the kind of one-to-one -one sessions that I do, I always kind of bring this up when we talk about cropping and post-processing is to, to really pay attention to the visual flow when in the orientation that you have your photograph in is absolutely imperative. Horizontal images have a completely different visual flow than a vertical photograph. And a vertical photograph has got a different flow than a square photograph. And they're all completely different. So whenever you're cropping your photographs, pay attention to what that visual flow is and where the long edge of your scene happens to be. And if it's, an, if it's a square crop you're putting on it, more than likely the, the visual flow is gonna be in a circle around the overall composition. So different types of compositions where you have different you know, key elements in your scene work better for different types of orientations. But I think that just paying attention to the visual flow of a photograph is really the big cropping mistake that a lot of people, especially when they're first getting started, kind of miss out on because they're, they're so focused on things like cleaning up a composition or removing distractions from the edges of their scene. And they kind of lose track on the actual visual flow of the overall photograph. So I think that that's a, an absolutely huge way to improve your photography. So, and I would encourage you, if, uh, if you never play around with different kind of, uh, of orientations and you really just kind of use the crop tool to, to clean up a composition, definitely experiment. If you got images in a horizontal composition, put it into a portrait orientation or experiment with a square crop to see if you'd like it a little bit better. And you might be surprised, I know I definitely was in just preparing for this video, that you might be able to turn some of your favorite photographs that uh, you, well, you thought were your favorite at the time and even improve them further and maybe, I guess, make them your new favorite. So I really do hope you enjoyed this week's video. I hope you were able to get at least one helpful piece of information out of it that you can apply to your cropping techniques moving forward. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below and I'll do my best to get back in touch with you as soon as possible. If you enjoyed the video, uh, if you could like it, subscribe to the channel and share the video with your friends. If you liked it that much, I would greatly appreciate it. And as always, I really do appreciate you taking the time of your day to watch this week's video and I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.